What's up guys? So on this channel, I'm always preaching to buy an older flagship phone. Um, I think they're just the best uh, phones you can get for the money and you know price to spec ratio, right? Uh, so we got the $1,100 14 Pro Max versus the now $300 Galaxy Note 10 Plus. It's an older flagship and man, you guys are going to be impressed at how well the Note 10 Plus is able to keep up with one of the, the best and newest a flagship so let's go ahead and kick this comparison off all right so I want to kick it off with the display design because I think this is actually um, pretty interesting here so Samsung has always been really excellent in displays so this phone even coming out in 2019 it has a 6.8 inch display it's dynamic AMOLED it's HDR 10 plus as well too and it's 1440p 438 for the PPI. The iPhone is LTPO. It is the XDR OLED display. It is 120 hertz HDR10, and then it is a 6.7 inch display. So it's actually slightly smaller. Uh, you probably can't tell. Uh, and it's a, a 1290 by 2796 resolution, 460 for the PPI. So as you guys can see, the Note 10 Plus actually has a really nice spec'd out display. It's got super high PPI. It's uh, also in a 1440p as well too. Uh, the only thing it's really missing is any type of high refresh rate. But I still don't knock it for that because the standard iPhone 14s don't even have you know 90 hertz or anything like that. So there's phones that come coming out you know last year that did not have um, you know a high refresh rate. Um, and the Note 10 Plus is a very smooth 60 hertz display. But I want you guys to pay attention to the display design here. Uh, the Note 10 Plus still has a smaller punch hole than the iPhone um, as well too. So content on the screen is less intrusive. Uh, the bezels on the Note 10 Plus still look really good. Uh, you can kind of debate whether you like flat or curved edges. It's really up to the person. Um, but yeah, as you guys can see, the screen is honestly still on par with, you know, one of the newest phones. I would say, you know, the only thing that you would notice is like maybe brightness as well. I don't even have the note up all the way, but uh, the iPhone definitely gets super bright, especially outdoors. I believe it's 2000 nits peak brightness. But as you guys can see here, man, two beautiful displays and the Note 10 Plus still looks very modern. Next, I want to go ahead and talk about the design. So I have this argument with a lot of my subscribers, and I want to know what you guys think. I think the Note 10 Plus has one of the most futuristic designs, and I think this is one of Samsung's best designs here. So compared to the iPhone, you know, I'll just we'll just say the the Max. Compared to the Max, um, it just looks really good next to it. Like it still looks kind of like a new phone to me. Um, this or glow color is pretty cool from Samsung. They never actually brought it back, but as you can see, it sort of shifts with the colors when you change it. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, but it still looks really modern even next to the iPhone um, here. So I always thought that was pretty cool. They're both IP68 dust and water resistant as well too. The iPhone is super heavy compared to the Note as well. Um, but believe it or not, the Note is actually slightly bit taller than the iPhone. Um, and it's much lighter and, and a little bit thinner as well too. Um, but I absolutely love the design on the Note. I think it still looks really modern. So that's one of the things that I've always appreciated about this phone. Just a super cool look. They both have this boxy feel to it that sort of cuts into the hand, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but uh, it is what it is. Also with the Note, it does have a S Pen. So you are able to do digital artwork or you're able to you know jot down notes real quick I simply just use it for like a grocery list um, you know if you're one of those people that go to a store and always forget something you can sort of like write a list down um, I use it for that but I've seen people do digital artwork on it so it's really cool there's a lot of features uh, built in with the S Pen that you can take advantage of I have a full video on that if you guys want to check that out uh, but hardware wise I think these guys I think the Note is still pretty much on par. So that's what I like about older flagships. Design-wise, they have everything that you could really want as far as the IP rating, the premium feel. Um, and I think a lot of older flagships still look really, really good to me. Now, here's where you will see a big difference um, with both of these two phones, actually. So with the Note 10 Plus, it got its last major OS update. It's currently getting, uh, hopefully, three years of security patches, but we know guaranteed two years. And also... Uh, so Android 12 was the last update for this phone and then we also have 
the Snapdragon 855 chip, micro SD card support, 256 gigs of internal storage, and 12 gigs of RAM. With the iPhone, we do have the Apple um, A16 chip, iOS 16, of course, and then the base model is 128 and also 6 gigs of RAM. Um, so you do have a higher base model on the Note 10 Plus. It's 256, 12 gigs with SD card support, so you get more storage uh, than on the 14 Pro Max. And um, I want you guys to pay attention to the speed on the Snapdragon 855 because it's still very efficient here. So I will just launch a few little applications here. We'll go ahead and launch YouTube. And look how look how fast the Note 10 Plus is, man. It's super, super blazing fast, guys. Like I said, super smooth scrolling for 60 hertz. But you definitely will feel that 120 hertz on the iPhone. If you never tried 120 hertz, go into Best Buy and check it out. It's a really uh, amazing thing to have. Subway Surf. So you would think that a phone that came out in 2019 would be significantly slower, but that's not the case. As you can see, the iPhone got in that Subway Surfer really fast. The iPhone does get into games really fast, but if we look at that, it wasn't dramatically faster, right? And you can see, like, the Note 10 Plus is still blazing through. It's not glitching and lagging, no real animation stutters and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and launch PUBG. And a lot of people ask me about gaming and they want to know if they can game on this budget phone. And guys, like I've always said, I personally would stay away from mid-range phones and uh, budget phones. A lot of mid-range phones, some mid-range phones are, are good for gaming. We saw how fast the iPhone, like I said, it gets in games super fast. But like I said, older flagships are definitely the way to go for gaming. Uh, these these older chips are just going to be way better than, let's say, for instance, you buy a Galaxy A53 or something like that. Uh, it's going to do, the Note 10 Plus is going to do significantly better than an A53, guys. So I get that question a lot. You definitely don't want to get a mid-range phone. And like the most popular ones, Pixel 6a, the Note 10 Plus is still going to do a better job uh, than that phone. Um, so yeah, so I highly recommend older flagship phones, but we see how fast the iPhone gets into these games here. Um, now, for gaming performance with these older flagships, man, I, I tell you guys all the time, and I have full gaming tests so you guys can actually see like me play a bunch of games. Uh, you just type in a search box, you can see HDR Extreme. This is able to hold 60 frames pretty consistently, and it's just a really good, smooth experience, guys. Now, the newer phones, right, with a high refresh rate, they are able to do the 90 frames, like I said, so you'll notice a big difference with that. But again, it's a massive price gap, and even something like the S22 Ultra can't do you know 90 frames yet compared to the, it plays the exact same on the Note. Um, so yeah, so like I said, the gaming performance is not super, not that big of a difference unless the game is running at like 90 frames. It's really uh, pretty much on par because the 855 and the 865 chips are really efficient for gaming even in 2023 guys now, this is probably where you'll see the biggest difference and I'll let you guys see the side-by-side -side stills and let me know honestly what do you guys think of the side-by-side -side still so the 14 Pro it does have a 48 megapixel standard and then you have a 12 megapixel telephoto it shoots 3x optical zoom and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide it does have a macro mode and then it shoots in 4k 60 and then have a 12 megapixel selfie cam that also shoots in 4K 60. And the Note 10 Plus has a pretty decent spec sheet for its triple camera setup. It's a 12 megapixel standard, 12 megapixel telephoto, does 2X, and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide, and then a 0.3 depth sensor uh, one here as well. And then you have 4K 60 on the front and back with a 10 megapixel selfie cam. So I'm gonna show you guys these side by side stills. Let me know, do you guys see a massive difference with these stills?
is a video on the 14 Pro Max or 2X, 3X. and our point 0.5 here's a video on the Note 10 Plus here's our 2x and here's our point 0.5 Both these phones actually have stereo speakers on them, so let's go ahead and hear them side by side. They're both maxed out. Yeah, the Pro Max definitely has a punchier bass to it for sure. Yeah, the Pro Max definitely has the punchier bass. If I turn off Dopey Atmos, we get a little bit more bass. Yeah, it's a little bit... Yeah, but the Pro Max does sound a little bit louder, a little bit fuller. Uh, so definitely would give the speakers to that. These are actually uh, some pretty good speakers. All right, so I want to talk about the biometrics and stuff like that. So of course with the iPhone, we do have Face ID. And then with the Galaxy, we actually do have screen unlock. But we also have a choice to use the in-display fingerprint scanner, which I always love. I'm a variety person, so I just love having different ways to open your phone so you can also do the face unlock on here but if you don't want to you can you have the choice to do the in display fingerprint sensor i think apple needs to also implement that put touch id in the power button and give you know users to you know methods there i think that would be pretty sweet and also there's a lot of cool stuff in the software that i don't think is talked about like samsung desktop support is pretty sweet um, and also you have the reverse wireless charging on the Note as well too. Alright, so lastly, battery life is still pretty good on the, the Note 10 Plus. And the battery experience is actually pretty good because this actually charges at 45 watts, which, is, which was pretty fast at the time and I still think pretty, pretty decently fast even today uh, still. So you do have pretty fast charging, 4300 milliamp battery, also you know wireless charging with the reverse wireless charging. Uh, these days, my Note pretty much can get six hours of screen on time pretty easily. Uh, with the 14 Pro Max, you actually have some pretty impressive battery life. It has a similar battery size, uh, 4300 uh, milliamps as well too, pretty much. And then you also have wire charging on here, but I don't think the wire charging is actually as fast as the Note. They don't really have it specified, but we know it does have 15 watt wireless MagSafe charging and then the standard wireless charging. Um, but yeah, so as you guys can see, you know, putting the Note 10 Plus head to head with the 14 Pro Max, you guys can see, man, it's pretty close, I think. So what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.